Okay, hi there, welcome to a short video looking at the concept of price inelastic supply. So price elasticity of supply measures the responsiveness of supply of a product, could be a good, could be a service, in response to a change in the demand and the price for that particular good or service. Now, supply is said to be price inelastic when the coefficient of price elasticity of supply is less than plus one. For example, it could be plus 0.3, for example, or plus 0.5. Good example, I think, of inelastic supply is the supply of new housing. Consider, for example, a town or a city that's aiming to produce, let's say, 5,000 new homes over a given period of time. There are obvious construction delays in both planning and uh, constructing and delivering houses to the market. And so when we think about the supply of new housing, supply tends to be fairly price inelastic, at least in the short term. We normally draw an elastic supply curve, as shown in this diagram here, where fairly flat, shallow supply curve, it looks to be fairly easy to increase production following an increase in demand. So how do we, how do we draw a price inelastic supply curve? Well, there it is, much steeper. Demand curve is shifted out from D1 to D2 on the right-hand side, and suppliers found it difficult to increase to meet higher demand. And the result tends to be that prices rise quite quickly. Now, supply will tend to be price inelastic when the supplier, the, the manufacturer, the producer has limited spare capacity, certainly in the short term. Perhaps they're working flat hours already. There could be a car plant that uh, literally can't find another, another production shift, or it could be a food processing business that's uh, already working at full tilt. If you have limited spare capacity, unless you can import products, supply tends to be fairly price inelastic. And likewise, it's low when the stock levels are low. The stocks of raw materials, component parts, tend to be low, or, and also when there might be delays before those stocks uh, appear on the production line. Supply tends to be priced inelastic when there's a time delay between starting and finishing the production process. Housing was a good example we mentioned there. Uh, agricultural products uh, clearly fit into that, although increasingly uh, technological advance is perhaps shortening the production time periods. And supply tends to be priced inelastic when factors of production, including labour, are occupationally immobile and, and cannot easily and quickly be switched between different tasks. And a good example of price inelastic supply tends to be when demand is at peak time. So, for example, if you're ordering a Domino's pizza, uh, ordering takeaway Nando's, what, what have you, when uh, absolute peak times, expecting it to be delivered <laughs> within half an hour, you might be struggling. Whereas at off-peak times, uh, the, the delivery times tend to come down, don't they, because they have spare capacity available to, to get products to you uh, through the takeaway system. Now, in recent months, just thinking of some application here, I think a good example of elasticity of supply has been the supply crunch. Uh, I've uh, actually done a separate video on the economics of the supply crunch. Check it out on YouTube. Uh, many businesses we know as we're emerging from the pandemic are low on stocks of key raw materials, component parts, and also, of course, shortages of skilled labour, including things like HGV drivers and people working in abattoir plants and things. And when those stocks are low, this reduces the ability of firms to sustain production. Indeed, many businesses have temporarily shut down some of their manufacturing. Here's a quick multiple choice question to finish with. A past question on this topic. The table shows the estimated price elasticity of supply for three commodities. Which one of the following can you deduce from the table? Here's a chance to press the pause button, have a go at the question, and then just press play when you want to go through the answer. So what do we think here? Well, the correct answer is, the correct answer is D. Uh, it's not C, by the way. Uh, quite a few people actually chose C, uh, but it says there, let's just work through C. 10% increase in the price of rice will cause a 2.7% decrease in quantity supplied. Well, the coefficient of elasticity supply is 0.27. But, but, higher prices of rice will cause an increase in the supply of rice because the price elasticity of supply is positive. D is correct. If the price of wheat goes up by 10%, only 3.1% increase in the quantity supplied. It's low elasticity. Uh, a is wrong. Uh, all of those three... Products, corn, rice and wheat, have a low price elasticity of supply. And B is wrong. A 10% increase in the price of corn would lead to a 0.23% uh, uh, 
increase in quantity supplied, not 23%. Hopefully you got that question right and thank you for joining in this short video on price inelastic supply.